Hello, Kelly Lee here from Rue Pursuit. We uh, today are working on our 1870 census page layout. Uh, in our previous video, we made these little envelopes and they turned out really cute and we're gonna use both of them for the 1870 page layout. Um, all right, so if you didn't see that video, head on over and you can see how to turn these uh, junk mail envelopes into these wonderful decorative envelopes. And this one turned out to be my real favorite with that little fabric strap on it. Anyway, so that turned out cute. Uh, but anyway, 1870 census for Sarah Ellen Hayes. Hi, Sarah. Uh, okay, so maybe you needed a, a longer peek at Sarah. Whew. Here we go. Here's our book. Um, she was Born in 1857, died in 1879, kind of a short life. Thought it was gonna be a short book, but it's not. <laughs> All right, so that's okay. 1870 census. Sorry, I'm gonna reach across here and get my 1870 census papers. So, oh my gosh, printing out the 1870 census was kind of a bear, I'll be honest with you. I mean, some in some issues, some issues, and uh, but we're all good now. All right, so this one, I believe. Where are we? Hayes. So this is eighteen seventy. William Hayes. That is not. 1870 census. What census is this? Is this the 1850s? Well, that's later census. All right. It must be like 1900. Um, all right. Let's see what we've got here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. 1870 census typed out. And 1870 census. Um... Not 1870 census. That's 1860 census. There's a little something. It will. Okay. So these are our two pieces that we're going to use. Oh, that's a surprise. Not supposed to see that. <coughs> oh, all right. It's true. Sarah Ellen Hayes gets married. All right, um, alrighty. So how are we gonna put these in here? We're gonna fold them into the envelope. This one looks like it'll go nicely if I just fold it in half that direction. And I like to do a little bit of highlighting. Well, that's kind of fun if people have to search for them. I don't know, it's a toss. All right, now I have to make sure that this this is not going to fit in this envelope long lengthwise. So maybe if I fold it in thirds, we'll do that. Um, and as always, I am, I, um, after I print these out, and I really like having the original, but the type is nice too, just in case you're having a problem reading the handwriting. Yes, I have been inking today. Um, the edges are torn, and then I just stress ink them, which I'm gonna do now to make them look old. Because we like old stuff. I had the urge to do the, the, the cheater inking. But I can do real inking. A cheater inking is where you just lay it down and you scrape. You don't scrape. It's not really scraping. You just rub a, that line. Basically, just I'll show you. I'll do it here, actually. You just do it this way. 
then you lose so much ink. Actually, if you're holding it, you lose it to your hands. <laughs> you don't really, you still lose it. Let's, let's be honest. We got a little red on there. Oh, this looks really good. So for these just papers like this, I actually really recommend the cheater method. It doesn't feel like cheating at all. Okay. All right, there we go. Turn it back. Yeah, we're getting a little red in there. Which is fine. Totally fine. Right. I'm gonna ink my creases just for fun. There, when we open it, then it looks like yeah, that looks good. Good. And that is going to go in this envelope. Price District. Hmm. You know, I, uh, I looked for a township map, which Indiana has townships, and a lot of states have townships, but I could not find a Pulaski County, Kentucky township map. I do not know why that is. I was going to look and see if they had districts instead of townships, which I think is what happened. Um, but yeah. Not really sure. So now it's cheater inking. Probably not going to look as good without that line. Let me just pull this back. So it has this black line that kind of hides the edge. But on here, the edge can look less. It can look more rigid or something. So now I'm trying to do a circle motions with this method. Man, I'm getting so much more ink on the page. Oh, And now we're just gonna put a little in the middle and that makes it look less stark. Blends everything together. And if you get a glob like that, it just makes it more realistic. There we go. Okay, there's that. Envelope back. It just doesn't look right if I don't do the back.
we're gonna pull the outside though. Here we go. So we've got our 1870 census. Hey, I forgot to tell you about the uh, census. So let's just, actually I'm gonna take off my little sticky note. And, all right, let's learn about the what was going on with Sarah Ellen Hayes. So Sarah was 11 years old. She was living with her father, uh, William Hayes, who was 41, and her mother, Eliza, who was uh, 43. And her older brother, William P. Hayes. They, both Williams had um, the initial P, but they had different last names. Um, William P., the younger, 16 years old, was Penn, or, no, I'm sorry, he was Perry, and William Hayes, his middle name was Penn, William Penn. All right, we're just going to glue that down. Oops. Some glue. I'm having glue problems. I'm not going to glue it. We're gonna, we're gonna do double-sided tape today. If I had any double-sided tape. Uh, I might not have put that where it belongs. That might have, that might have happened. So white glue it is. <laughs> Even though I need to refill this. Alright, I'm going to do both these at the same time. I decided. It's a really exact science I've got going on for sizing these. Let me tell you. Okay, so I'm going to put enough glue for both papers. Gravity, gravity. You can do it. side and put these together and steered up paper style paper glue style yeah so I've been stuck in the house for Approximately the Tuesday before last, 12 days without leaving the house, <laughs> and turns out I am a true introvert because I really like not leaving the house. It's pretty great. don't know how much of a difference this is going to make, but I am going to line these up so that they're like how they were when they were connected originally this way. I'm leaving lots of extra room. I just learned from doing this that if you get it in, your binding, your binding gets too thick in here and then it causes issues with the spine so I just don't I don't want that to happen add in some ink and then I'm going to ink along the edge here just to kind of blend that in
lay down that background a little bit. Darken it up. Get rid of some of that glossiness. So 1870, that was like post-war uh, and I'm sure they're happy not to be in the war. Things may be getting back to normal. There's probably some financial strain. And actually, let's take a look and see um, from the census what it says about how much money our William Hayes, $600. Um, so they weren't doing too great. They were kind of poor. Um, what is this column? Let me see if I can read that. Oh, male children of, U of U.S. of 21 years of age and, um, and upwards. So it's basically saying the men who were available for to serve in the war. Whose right to vote was denied. Oh, interesting. Well, he doesn't have that box checked, so that's interesting. I wonder if it says whether or not they served in the military, because... And I would have been curious about because I just can't quite figure out if he did it. It doesn't seem like he did, but there was a William Hayes who did serve from that area, but such a common name. So I don't believe that William Hayes served in the Civil War. Uh, but he was definitely the right age to serve. But he had young children, so who knows why people... They weren't especially, I mean, they weren't like Quakers, although I do have Quaker ancestors. Well, that's kind of interesting, but it looks like they were not well off. They were probably struggling a bit after the war. Looks like I'm taking that backside a little bit, which I really didn't want to do, but this is, uh, almost everything else is inked in this book, so I guess what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference? Okay, or distressed, whatever you call it. Put the lid on that, keep it, keep it from drying out. Okay, so we've got our census information. Let's see who else is living in the household. We've got William, we've got Josiah, we've got Sarah. James and Albert. Now, there's no indication that they lost, that William and Eliza lost any children during this time period, which is pretty great because that was very common. But yeah, there's no, I couldn't find any um, cemetery records that would have indicated that. Uh, let's see, Eliza was keeping house, William was a farm laborer, and Josiah was a farm laborer. Now, again, uh, William Hayes does not own his own property. Value of real estate. Yeah, he doesn't own any real estate. So I'm thinking they were, you know, he was probably actually farm labor too in reality. But. All right, but I don't know how that works. If he worked on a family farm or something and the other two worked on somebody else's farm, who knows? All right, so now those look really good. So we're gonna put these here. So we've got our envelopes for the census and then we've also got our um, original 1869 receipt from a general store 
in a different county so it wasn't related to them but here ooh, here's fun uh let's see what this is we've got mirrors sleeve sets hmm, like sleeves to a shirt uh, knives razors knives come back to that shoelaces uh coral buttons vest buttons pearl buttons pearly buttons um beads blue some kind of beads and britches maybe hmm. buttons were 75 cents and if the value of gosh your property was only six hundred dollars looks like inflation was really high during this time look at that um 115 dollars seems like a lot of money in 1869 so i'm thinking there was a lot of inflation after uh, after the war so it's crazy but and this is torn and i am sure that i tore it probably i might not have some of them were torn by um just in the book torn but i did tear some of them because some of these papers had mold starting on them so i i just went through and i got rid of everything on there that looked a little bit blackish and uh away it went because i just it's not worth the risk you know i mean those papers are cool but not if they have mold on them so we don't want that so yeah, it looks like by the time the 1870 census comes along, Sarah has two more siblings, James and Albert. And she's the only girl. There is some indication she might have had an older sister from an, from William having another wife perhaps, but I, I that's a mystery yet to be solved. In the book, it says Sister, I think it says Sister Mary's, Sister's children, Sister's two boys, and it's really hard to look up if they never lived with William Penn Hayes, and it really appears that they never did live with him, so that's kind of, makes it pretty tricky. Um, one of the things that I do like to do if I can find it here somewhere is to add the extra information in like a narrative form on the uh, census so for instance I would add like some oh it's so sticky wow I did this like two weeks ago it should not be sticky must be the glue anyway so I mean the uh, this kind of glue glue stick that's what I was trying to say Whoa. still foggy from the stick <laughs> from being sick but anyway add something like this and then add in here in narrative form um, uh, William Penn did not own his own real estate he had six hundred dollars in of cash property uh, he uh, he had four boys and one girl uh, he was he and two of his older sons were working um, on a farm of uh, you know who was attending school that sort of thing and then who their neighbors were so let's see who their neighbors if we've got anything interesting in here we've got Morgan Crow Harrow Bray Hargis like Heron, Weaver, Roy, and Phelps. None of those names are familiar to any of the related names um, that I have in their album, uh, in their photo album. So, hmm, we'll see, I don't know. Nobody uh, of their immediate family was living directly next door, so they weren't, they probably, Wrong glue. Wrong glue bottle. Uh, they probably weren't living. Did 
Did I use that for the, oh well. Hopefully not. At any rate, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna glue, yeah, this whole thing down. I'm not gonna make it a pocket. I could make it a pocket. I'm not going to. But anyway, it's fun to put those extra little notes um, in this format. I'm not going to do that on these two pages because it doesn't quite work with what I've got going on with these two envelopes. I'm just going to, not gluing these together, I'm just doing a little glue sharing. There we go. Let's see how far we can put this down here. All right, got that in there. Got a little ephemera piece. I'm gonna take this right over to that edge. There we go. All right. And those are our, that's our page layout for the 1870 census. I'm gonna let these dry. Uh, I'm gonna need a label for this too. Um, so I'll probably include um, the 1870 census in this area here. So I'm just going to go ahead and find my calligraphy marker that I used for this. And hopefully it doesn't run away. Oh boy, I think it's my brown. It's a very good All right, we're going to use this one. And you could also use stamps. Uh, hold on a second. I think we're going to do that today. We're going to use. Those are really fun ones. I've got these really old ones. These are my grandma's. Um, from when she was a teacher. She must have got this right away. It's from the 19. Um, 1930s when she graduated from teaching academy or whatever you want to call that. I think it was the Danville Normal School, right? Okay, so we're going to do that here. Make sure all of these are down because they're only like these are the letters from <laughs> and then I just put some washi tape around them because I use this one so often that I just keep it together like that. All right, that looks really good. Now we can do 1870. It might be fun to use this today. numbers in here. We got a three, we got a one, we got a five. What do we have an eight and seven? I don't know. I don't, I want to say that I did not have all the numbers in here. So this might be a fruitless, a fruitless venture. This font looks really cool. Got these. They're just like a couple pennies, really. Under a dollar. And eight. One. Eight. Technically, I got a zero. And I don't have a seven. Seriously. Use this as a seven. No. That looks ridiculous. Okay. That's not going to work. Bummer. 1870. Looks like I'm going to be handwriting that. Well, that looks a little weird. 
weird, but okay. Okay, you don't have to watch me do that. Okay, so we got 1870 census. We got our envelopes patched on. I think that's good. I think we're good. All right. All right, so we're calling, we're calling it done. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe. We've been coming out with videos about every two days. If you're interested in more about um, genealogy research tips and tricks, you can head over to my website. It's root-pursuit.com. And uh, I'll talk to you later.